As a 13 year old, I used to really, really, really like Drew's sketch. Like, this is how my sketchbook looks. And this is literally one out of the hundreds sitting inside my drawers. At that point of time, I was inspired by a special someone named Boichi, especially for his manga series named Dr. Stone. It looked like this. He used a pen display to draw stuff. I saw that he used a pen display to draw stuff on his channel called Boichi Bay Toon, if I'm not wrong. And in that channel, he used a huge Wacom pen display, if I'm not wrong. But I, at that point of time and this point of time, did not possess that amount of money. And hence, I had to do my prior research so that I could get one and make my own apocalyptic manga series. This is how it went. Okay, on researching, I finally found out that I had two options. One being to get myself a scanner and then get myself something like this, a light pad box so that I could draw on it as I saw how things would look in the digital art piece and then convert it to actual digital art via this. I found this option to be going around the bush like a little bit, so I ditched it entirely. I went for the graphic tablet option, which is overall more cheaper and as you can see is only $36.99 at an offer. At the price that I bought it, I got it for around $2,999, which is actually not a bad price at all. This product is really good and I'd recommend it to anyone who wanted to start digital art. This is a good one. Let me explain in much more depth right in this video. Okay, now let's start talking about different things involved in graphic tablets so that we can actually compare the performance metrics of this graphic tablet with other graphic tablets without you thinking that you're a fool while I'm blabbering in technical jargon. Let us start with the easiest of them all. That is pressure sensitivity. Pressure sensitivity is essentially this. When I put all my force into drawing a line, I get a thick line. When I put all of my effort into drawing a very thin line without any pressure, that is a low pressure line and this is a high pressure line. The pressure sensitivity levels are essentially how gradual is the transition between low pressure and higher pressures. Like how smooth is it? It turns out that there are essentially 8192 levels in this tablet that you were thinking about buying which is really great and for me at that point of time when I wanted to make this comic book it sounded really good so I took that as well. The next thing I want to talk to you about is tilt angle. At a weird angle if you grip the pen and start drawing nothing happens but at a better angle within the tablet's tilt angle if you draw you get a good line and that angle in this tablet is 60 degrees 60 degrees is plenty of safe room but if you want to do very weird strokes that look like these i'm pretty sure you need to go with a different tablet this is not your place and now let's talk about the final metric of comparison which is the biggest elephant in the room that is latency. You all know what latency if, is if you've played a video game. So how much time does it take for the stroke to track my pen and drag behind it? It's kind of low on most devices, but it will be low at a level where you don't notice it. At this tablet, it seems that it is 200 reads per second. 200 reads per second implies that the tablet is going to be reading your every stroke 200 times per second. That is very responsive and is very good, even if you want safe room, actually. Okay, so at that point of time, I found out that I had three primary options, including a tablet from Huion, 
a tablet from Wacom and a tab tablet from XP Pen. The Wacom was an obvious no because it had only 2048 pressure sensitivity levels and the other features were also not up to the mark for the price. So I deleted it out of my options. And I took the Huion and the XP Pen and decided to pit them against each other to find out what would win. I found on going over that for my tastes, the XP Pen was kind of better. Old me thought that it would be a very good idea to make an unboxing ASMR video as soon as the tablet arrived at my doorstep. And as you can see right now, he did all the preparations required for that. This is just me using a box cutter and recording the sounds of the creaking cardboard with my microphone. Here is the creaking plastics sound. Frankly speaking, we can see that inside the box, we have the tablet wrapped in nice butter paper and inside the butter paper, we have the tablet. Please do not remove the laminated sheet like I did back then because that made a lot of scratches appear on my tablet. Now we have the XP Pen Pen, which is XP Pen's stylus. The tips wear out pretty quickly, so they've provided replacement tips. Here's a connector and the connector has been supplied with two converters one from USB A to USB C the other from USB A to micro USB so that you can use it with your Android devices that is pretty much what's inside the box okay so before we actually get into testing out this amazing tablet uh, I want you to go ahead and download XP Pen's driver software this is available on their website, which I'll be linking in the description and the comment section. They've been maintaining this for the past two years since I've bought the tablet, which is 2020. Oh wait, it's 2023 already. So it's been three years and they've still maintained, maintained their driver software. If you're confused as to what the driver software does, it essentially allows you to map key binds from the tablet to your keyboard. K1 is the topmost key and K8 is the bottommost key. And I myself, I'm going to show you how to map the keys. Starting off, K1 is going to be something we're gonna map. This is the clean button, which means that everything that you're going to add, the macros, they get deleted when you click it. Once that's done, you can set a new key bind. In my case, W. Why have I set W here and S here? Let me show you inside Krita. Inside Krita, get into settings and configure Krita. This is how you set up a shortcut. You'll be placed in the general settings and I want you to get into the keyboard shortcuts area. Over here, type undo. In the undo part, you'll find yourself two options. We need undo remove nodes. Here, there'll be an option called the custom keybind. And on the custom keybind, you need to click it with your mouse and then give your input which is S in my case, S, yes. Now we're going to take a look at redo. Redo is positioned at W in my case, which is W. We're going to save this and you're going to press OK. You're going to say save custom shortcuts and you're going to name it something because if you delete Krita and download it for an update, it needs to be stored somewhere. And we're going to press OK. Voila, we have it all ready and set up. Assuming you're a newbie, you're going to have no idea of how Krita works. So if you're going to download Krita and work with it, this is how you start. 
you're gonna press control N and then you go gonna go into content change the color to whatever you want on this triangle and if you rotate it the hue changes that's that I want a warmer color that's actually not very red and I prefer this actually once that is done you can go into the width and adjust it to your heart's content or take a predefined setup in my case I'm gonna take a predefined setup which is an A4 sheet higher resolutions mean that you're gonna have lesser layers so choose wisely that's all I can say okay now that the layer is created let's go ahead and try to do something on it we're going to make a sketch a sketch that is going to show us that this tablet is capable of making good pieces take a look at this we're going to draw a straight line to check if this tablet will make any wobble in this line or read it properly okay that's a pretty straight line and that is literally zero wobble in it so this tablet is capable of making perfectly straight lines that is a huge bonus so if i wanted to undo this i'm gonna press the keyboard shortcut which is the second key that i've mapped s2 which is essentially the undo key in my krita settings once that is done you can go ahead and start painting your masterpiece I'm going to draw something very random here and I'm not going to be too serious with it. I'm gonna take some inspiration from Hollow Knight, you know. Let me draw an androgynous insect. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna draw an androgynous insect. I'm just gonna steal the eyes from Hollow Knight. Oh wait, it's becoming Hollow Knight. God, that looks cool. Now let's draw the legs. And let's add a sword or a nail as they call it in Hollow Knight. Voila! Now we have a Hollow Knight man ready on our screen to paint. We're going to change the color by using the shortcut CTRLU and we're going to either darken it. Darkening doesn't look very cool. Ah, this looks perfect. So now that that is done, you can go ahead and start painting. heavy day. Let's get that out of the way. Now it's time we shade. For me, I find that using a color closer to violet yields me better results with high value, actually low value and low saturation. This will look very weird. We need to lower the opacity to 50 and then set the layer to multiply. Multiply is essentially something that's known as a blend mode and it allows you to make shadows that look really cool. You won't see the difference on white, but you're going to see it in every other color. For example, take this. Let's say that it does not have an alpha as well and then let's just take the background off. 
Voila, now we have Hollow Knight fan art. Yay! Now we know that this tablet can draw something. And these are some other things that this tablet has made in the past and has been useful to me very much. This is a cat or a dog based on how you look at it. And this is a thumbnail for a YouTube video. And this is basically the Mr. D Boxer channel logo. And this is one of the very first drawings I made on this tablet, which is a comic book cover, which I failed to fully realize. I did not make the comic book. This is another sketch for the comic book cover. This is another sketch for the comic book cover. It's sad that I couldn't finish making it, but I have a few ideas nowadays. So tell me if you want to see them in a YouTube video on a different channel. I'll definitely make them if you want me to. Okay. Now that was how the tablet would perform. Let's get to the next aspect. For testing portability, we're going to take this bag and load it up with luggage like these. Our XP pin tablet. And a connector that will connect this tablet with an other tablet and a USB-A to USB-C pin and a USB-A to USB micro pin that we'll be carrying with us. These two were provided inside the box in which the tablet came with. In which the tablet came back. Now we're going to place the tablet on which we're going to be looking at what we're gonna draw and this is the pen that we're going to be drawing with this is also from xp pen now that we have him set up let's take a go okay now that we're back and focused we can actually take a look at how i'm going to connect this with the tablet it's very simple you just find the usb-c port and you plug it in like what I did right now and you take the other end which is the graphic tablets connector and then you take the graphic tablet and then you plug that in like so voila we have our tablet setup Okay, now it's time to take a look at the biggest elephant in the room. That is, who is this device really meant for? In accordance to my beliefs, I believe that this tablet is essentially meant for a beginner to digital art who wants to start learning the nuances of 3D, digital art, anything to do with actually using a graphic tablet. You can even play Osu games with this and it's a pretty inexpensive option starting at $50 or 1500 no, 3500 INR. On that note, I'd like to tell you to take a look at more of my videos if you're still confused as to what graphic tablet you have to buy. I have a video explaining different aspects of graphic tablets, how to look for the best one that will suit your needs. You can check that out in the cards. And I'd like to tell you to take a moment to show some love to the channel if you found value here. And on that note, this is Mr. D-Boxes signing off for the day and I hope to see you soon. Bye!